Okay, so fine. So after uh, the completion of the uh, last unit, now we are actually starting with the new unit. And this unit is actually all about the weak interactions. Now you might have known about these weak interactions in your previous, um, uh, in your pre first unit, uh, that uh, the weak interactions are actually one of the four fundamental interactions. Since you know that there are four fundamental interactions, uh, one is your uh, electromagnetic interaction, then there is strong interaction, weak, and gravitational interaction. Okay. Now, what are these actually weak interactions? So the weak interactions actually, as I as you can see on your screen, that the weak interactions they actually occur for all fundamental particles. Okay except for the gluons and the photons. Gluons and photons are also fundamental, but these weak interactions, they are, they are, these gluons as well as the photons. Gluons are the mediating order in, um, in case of the Cox, whereas the photons uh, are the mediating particle in case of the electromagnetic interactions. So these two particles are not affected by these uh, weak interactions, but all other elementary fundamental particles, they are being affected by these weak interactions. So weak interactions, you know that they are actually involve the exchange of this production of W plus minus and Z bosons. They, they are Z, W and Z bosons actually the mediating particles. As you have, we have discussed this also in the last lecture where we have discussed about the standard model, the mediating contours. Okay. And you also know one more thing that these weak forces are the short range, short range forces. And they, uh, they are actually effective for the very short ranges. So up, uh, if you will see in the ordinary matter, their effect are negligible, right? But uh, uh, but they uh, allow an effect that is otherwise forbidden. Okay? Except in the cases where they allow an effect that is otherwise forbidden. But it's, it's not forbidden, but it's there. There's a number of conservation laws that are valued for strong and the electromagnetic interactions, right? You know the conservation laws, various types of the conservation laws. They are valued for the strong and electromagnetic interactions, but they are not being uh, satisfied by these weak interactions. That is, they are being broken by the weak interactions, right? So despite this uh, slow rate and the short range, these weak interactions actually play a very important role in makeup of the world that we actually observe. You will see uh, as we go through this unit how important they are. So any process where we have the number of particles minus the number of antiparticles of a given quark or lepton type changes is weak decay process. Okay? So what it means? Yani pe the number of particles minus the number of antiparticles of a particular quark or a lepton type if it changes. So that then, then it, the process that is being involved there is actually a weak decay. And in that case, the mediating quarter jo aapka hai, that is a W boson. Thing. So weak decays are thus responsible for the fact that ordinary stable matter contains only up and down cons and electrons. Thing. So the, it will not involve the, uh, uh, other quarks. It involves other quarks, but we will, that is actually some advancement to the weak interactions, but we will see that in the later when we will go about the charged current interactions and the neutral current interactions. Okay, so weak interaction, this is just some basic idea about the weak interactions. Now, I will just uh, go to the very lecture, lecture where we will discuss the weak interactions, uh, where they actually come into the play. So we were going to start with that particular thing. So this was some introductory introduction about the weak interaction. So you need to know that weak interaction is one of the fundamental interaction, one of the fundamental interactions, like we have uh, other fundamental interactions, like strong is their electromagnetic and the mediating quarter in case of the weak interactions are uh, so, in case of W uh, plus minus and Z zero bosons, actually, so to understand this weak interaction fully, we will discuss one of the theory that is what we called as the VA theory of weak interaction. VA theory of weak interactions, V theory of weak interactions. What is V, what is A? You will come to know what is V, V is A at the end of this lecture. V is vector and A is actual, but uh, you will come to know at the end of the lecture what we actually mean by v, this V and the A. Okay, now you might have heard about the process that what we call as a beta decay beta decay. Now beta decay was actually proposed by a Fermi. So 
so what is beta decay beta decay is that so it is a weak interaction that is responsible for this beta B decay beta decay says that the neutron can goes to proton plus some other particles and the proton can goes to neutron this is the beta decay so this is what we call as a fermi theory of beta decay so i will start here with the point that in fermi theory in fermi theory the beta decay is the beta decay is considered to be the result of a interaction to be the result of an interaction of nucleon nucleon you know proton and the neutron nucleon in the nucleus in the nucleus with electron neutrino field electron neutrino field this is fermi theory so fermi theory says that the beta decay is considered because of the result of the interaction of a nucleon in the nucleus with the electron neutrino field what it mean that means the nucleon is transformed the nucleon is transformed that means from a neutron as i said the from a neutron to proton and or proton to neutron that is why so it's a result that will result in the creation of an electron and positron for example agar aap neutron ki baat kare neutron will go to proton plus uh, electron plus electron neutrino so yahan pe neutron plus positron plus electron anti neutrino right सॉरी यहाँ पे आपका एंटी न्यूट्रिनो है और यहाँ पे आपका न्यूट्रिनो है राइट आई विल जस्ट कम टू दिस इन सो ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड ईच एंड एवरी पॉइंट बिकॉज इट्स गोइंग टू बी वेरी लेंथी लेक्चर सो डोंट आई एम जस्ट स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम द वेरी बेसिक काइंड ऑफ ए थिंग सो आई कंसिडर द बीटा डीके वायर इन वी कंसिडर दैट द रिजल्ट ऑफ एन इंट्रेक्शन ऑफ ए न्यूक्लियन इन द न्यूक्लियस विद एन इलेक्ट्रॉन न्यूट्रन न्यूट्रॉन फील्ड एंड दैट मीन्स वट इज मीन बाई इलेक्ट्रॉन न्यूट्रन फील्ड दैट मीन्स द न्यूक्लियन इज ट्रांसफॉर्मड न्यूक्लियन मीन्स आई द प्रोटॉन आर ए न्यूट्रॉन सो फ्रॉम इट इज ट्रांसफॉर्मड फ्रॉम न्यूट्रॉन टू प्रोटॉन और प्रोटॉन टू न्यूट्रॉन एंड दैट विल रिजल्ट इन द क्रिएशन ऑफ एन इलेक्ट्रॉन अगर फॉर एक्साम्पल न्यूट्रॉन की बात करें हम सो इट विल रिजल्ट इन द क्रिएशन ऑफ एन इलेक्ट्रॉन अगर हम प्रोटॉन की बात करें इट विल रिजल्ट इन द क्रिएशन ऑफ ए पोजिट्रॉन अलॉन्ग विद दियर एंटी न्यूट्रोनो हियर न्यूट्रोनो ठीक है सो द वीक फोर्स दैट इज रेस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर दिस डी के अलोज दलोज अस टू यूज द पर्टेबेशन थ्योरी मैथड्स पर्टेबेशन थ्योरी मैथड सो वट इज द पर्टेबेशन थ्योरी मैथड्स हियर दैट मीन्स द weak force that is responsible for this particular decay that is actually so that is given by the perturbation theory methods according to this theory the probability but according to this perturbation theory methods the probability of the transition the probability of the transition of a system of a system from initial stage or i can say to the initial state rather than stage initial state to the final state final state is given by this is given by so what is the probability you know the probability is given by this p it's given by 2 pi by h cross then mod of integral psi f star um perturbation operator h dash psi i that is the initial state dou tau in to dn by de okay name this as equation first so what is this p it is actually the probability of a transition of a system from going to the initial state to the final state what is here initial state initial state is here neutron agar for example is ki baat kare the initial state here is proton so this neutron is the initial state and this whole to final state particles and this is the final state so what are this psi i and psi f where this psi r and psi f or this is actually quantum mechanical treatment you have uh, studied your quantum mechanics in the first as well as in the second semester so you know the what i mean by the perturbation operator and all those things i do not go into those details because that are you already know perturbation operator kya cheez hai okay now psi i and the also the wave functions it is actually the state of the system psi i and psi f are the wave functions they are the wave functions of initial 
and final states of the system states of system right yani agar for example is ki baat karu main neutron so it is uh, the initial state is psi the initial wave function of this particular state is psi i and the final is psi f of all of this is the wave function of initial and the final states of the system h dash as i said h dash is the perturbation operator this is an operator is the perturbation operator is the perturbation operator and this is responsible for which is responsible for the transition responsible for this particular transition responsible for this transition okay and then what is this dn by de this is the density of final states density of final states final states the final states here this is the final state one this is the final state two so you can consider either this or this this is one of the same thing so this is the density of the final states and this doubt ta jo hai this is the volume element volume element fine so let me repeat it again so that i will move to the next thing then so i say that we are considering here start with the fermi theory because in fermi theory we consider that the the new new neutron will go to the proton along with the electron and an anti neutrino and the neutron so this is this process is what we called as a beta decay and this process was given by the fermi so that's why we call so it was named after him his name so we call this as a fermi theory now what is actually happening here the probability for the transition of this uh, system or the state from initial to the final state is given by this this thing hmm? this particular equation the p is the probability and we involve these thing and as i said ki this psi i and psi up they are the initial and the final wave functions of the system the system here is this and this dn by d is the density of the final states final state here is this final state here is this and this doubt of is the volume element fine okay so let me let me say again now in case of the beta decay in case of beta decay somebody has key if is uh, this uh, audio on please uh, show ra raha hai decay so that is so as i said ki there are two different processes that the neutron get go to proton plus in this electron plus electron anti neutrino or this proton can go to neutron plus some positron plus electron neutrino this is the beta decay fermi theory of beta decay okay fine <clears throat> now what i will say i will say that jo psi i maine abhi kaha tha i will just represent this psi i equal to psi n i Why psi n i? That is, this is the initial initial state of the nucleon. Initial state of nucleon. Initial state of nucleon because here we you know it involves only the nucleon, either neutron or a proton, and stands for the nucleon. Now, what is psi f? Psi f here is because in the final state we have three different. particles three different fermions so i will represent it by psi and f psi of this electron and psi of electron neutrino uh, i will just simply represent it by the neutrino he, here it by the neutrino because e will just generalize it for electron as well as the positron new neutrino will it represent it for the new anti neutrino as well as the neutrino okay now what is this psi and f wire psi and f jo hai is the wave function of this is the wave function of the final state of nucleon final state of nucleon because there in the final state we have an, again nucleon right and psi e jo hai this is the electron wave function the other wave function of electron electron wave function electron wave function and psi nu is the neutrino wave function neutrino ya ye this is anti neutrino anti neutrino wave function 
Okay. So what I did actually, I consider this beta decay, wherein the neutron can decay to a proton or proton can decay to a neutron along with these particles. Now I state that as I said, psi i is the initial state of the nucleon. So I represent it by psi n i and psi f is actually uh, in the final states in a city known three different particles or three different fermions, proton, neutron, electron, or this, this, this. So I will represent final state by these three as a product of these three wave functions. While psi and f will stand for this uh, nucleon, either proton or a neutron, psi electron is actually the wave function of electron or positron, and psi nu is the wave function of electron and neutrino or electron neutrino. Now, if you look at all these particles, since all these particles the, which are involved in the beta decay, they are actually the fermions. And you know the what are the fermions? Fermions are super half particles. Neutron has a super half proton, electron, anti neutron, they are all fermions, this is a class of the particles. So each of them must be represented by four component wave function. So we will represent each of the particle here with the help of a four component wave function. And we call them as the bisupernals. Four component wave function. We, four component wave function, or we also call them as bisupernals. So how I will represent them? I will represent them by like psi one, psi two, psi three, psi four. Okay. Where the two components of the bisupernals, the two components psi one and psi two, two components of bisupernal indicate the spin state of the particle indicate the spin state of particle and the remaining two remaining two for example psi 3 psi 4 indicate the two possible energies indicate the two <clears throat> possible energy values possible energy values. So what could be the two possible energy values? That is plus minus under root of since E square is equal to energy mass equivalence relation square. So this is M square C4 plus P square C square. Okay? And this is for given momentum. For given momentum. Okay? Again, uh, as I said, since all these particles involved in this beta decay are fermions, so I will represent all these particles by four component wave function, or we also call them as a bisupernar. And each of the particle will be represented by this bisupernar. So where the two components of this bisupernar will indicate the spin state of the particle, and the remaining two will indicate the possible energy values of that particular particle. Whether we will talk of neutron, proton, electron, or electron, anti neutrino. Okay, now we, the op, let's talk about this perturbation operator. The operator H dash to up the operator H dash is a complex combination, is a complex combination of these by spinners of these by spin earth and four gamma matrices four gamma matrices again this gamma matrices you have gone through this in your quantum mechanics okay what are the gamma matrix actually this operator h dash joint perturbation operator it is a complex com combination of these by spinners as well as the four gamma matrices whereas the gamma matrices aapki kaun si hai gamma matrix one is like zero sigma x zero sig uh, sorry sigma x zero they are all operators here so i will represent it by like this similarly i have gamma two it's given by zero sigma y <coughs> this is minus sigma x minus sigma y and zero and gamma three that is zero sigma z minus sigma z and zero and what is gamma four and the gamma these are gamma matrices are this is one zero zero one this is one zero zero one 
सो जो ऑपरेटर एस डी एस है जिस कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ दिस बायोस्पिनर जो मैंने अभी लिखा था साइव साइड एंड दिस गामा मैट्रिसिस ना वट इज दिस सिग्मा एक्स सिग्मा वाई सिग्मा सर दे आर दे मैट्रिस वायर यू नो दैट वायर दिस सिग्मा एक्स इज गिवन बाई जीरो वन वन जीरो सिग्मा वाई जो आप कहें दिस इज जीरो माइनस आयोटा आयोटा जीरो सिग्मा जेड इज वन जीरो जीरो वन एंड देन देर इज जीरो ऑपरेटर दिस इज जीरो 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 सिग्मा एक्स सिग्मा वाई सिग्मा जेड दिस इज माइनस वन एंड देन वी हैव ऑल्सो वन one operator it is 1 0 okay yes sir kya aap thoda sa slow ho sakte hain ye bahut fast ho raha hai okay fine please okay fine so okay let me just go back to the previous slide I see that I consider this beta decay as I said since the beta decay is a four so all the particles involved in this beta decay are four are the fermions. This is fermion, so we can have this is fermion, 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 fermion. So then I said I will represent all these particles by a four component wave function, which we call bi-spinner. We say that is by this particle. The two components of this bi-spinner will indicate the spin state of the part particular particle, and the two components will indicate the possible energy values. The possible energy values are given by this particular equation. Fine. Now, then uh, I have to actually I am talking I am just trying to explain this very equation psi f psi n so so that I will write down the probability of this transition. Fine. Okay. Now then I say the operator H dash actually जो है, this is a complex combination of these bispinners जो मैंने अभी लिखा था, the psi one, psi two, psi three, psi four. I will just combine them and the gamma matrices. Gamma, this is the gamma. These are the gamma matrices one, two, three, and four. Where the these values like sigma x, sigma y, sigma z, I can represent. They are given by these particular values, right? So. I don't know whether you have studied poly matrices. आपने पढ़ा होगा? पढ़ा है कि नहीं? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, uh, if you know something about the poly matrices, you know the poly matrices can be used to connect. This can, can be used for the construction of the op operators for the spin flipping. For this poly matrices, which we use, they are actually used for the construction of the operators for spin flipping. So likewise, these gamma matrices, which are they are actually used for constructing operators, which will transform all these fermions. Let me write it here so that you will remember it. This gamma matrices can be used for. constructing operators which transform all four components all four components of a bispinner according to certain rules What are those rules? We are not going to discuss it here. But as I said, the poly matrices are used to construct the operators for spin flipping. These gamma matrix can be used for constructing operators, which will transform these all these four components of the bispinner accord accordingly. That yani means this is used for the transformation of these bispinners, components of of these bispinners. Okay. Now here I am. <clears throat> uh, I hope this is understood up to this point. Now I am going to discuss something else. So, in order to understand this beta decay, I will go to the QED, the quantum electrodynamics, where in we actually describe the quantum in quantum electrodynamics we are actually describing the electromagnetic interaction. So this Fermi theory actually uses this electromagnetic interaction as an analogy to understand this beta decay. For example, so let me write it here first. Fermi theory. Uses electromagnetic interaction as an analogy 
to understand beta decay. Yani we are trying to understand this beta decay in terms of this electromagnetic interaction to understand this beta decay. For example, the electromagnetic interaction, you know the electromagnetic interaction always takes between the charged particles. The electromagnetic interaction between an electron, an electron and a proton is described as by some fun diagram. So how is uh, how is it described? It's like we have a process. <clears throat> uh, uh, this is some propagator. OK, so if this is a proton and here it's an electron, this is the, from the QED. So this will go like this some electron and it will be like here the proton this is electromagnetic interaction between an electron and a proton yani an electron can interact with this proton it will just produce electron and a proton but along with this exchange operator so let me represent it by the gamma propagator we call this as a propagator so we represent this current as j mu e and here the current will go this is just a current j mu p j mu p this is a Feynman diagram describing this electromagnetic interaction between between an <coughs> electron and a proton this is a Feynman diagram this is simply so this beta decay actually uses this analogy and he will try to explain this beta decay by using this concept which, which is used there in the electromagnetic QED. Now, if you if I'm going to write down the matrix elements for this process, so we will consider the interaction between an electron current, that is electron current is J mu E and the proton current J mu P. So this is actually the generated by some electromagnetic field and we represent that by the A mu, right? So the what are those matrix elements? We represent the matrix elements for this process as MFI is given by um, J mu E with the electromagnetic field A mu, A mu. Or this is similar to like J mu E, this is electron current. Then, <clears throat> okay, minus one by Q square, J mu E and J mu P. This is how we give the matrix elements for this particular process. It is a very complicated equation, but we simply write it in terms of an electron current and the matrix, matrix current. So if this is an electromagnetic field. This is an electromagnetic field, A mu, and it is generated by, this is actually generated by this proton current. So this is given by, so when I'm going to consume this, I can write it down, this is one by, one by minus one by Q square, J mu E, J mu P. Now you know that Q square, kya hai aapka? this is the square of the four momentum square. Square of the four momentum or four momentum square, just come to the Square of the four momentum or four momentum square. And what is minus one by Q square then? Minus one by Q is, essentially referred to as a proton propagator is referred to as proton propagator yeah, it will generate it will just generate this proton current so that means this particular interaction is actually viewed as this interaction is viewed as an current current interaction current current interaction okay so so yeah so i can also use the in Dirac spinners here so in in terms of the Dirac spinners the matrix elements in terms of the Dirac spinners the matrix elements the matrix elements may be written as yani same geometric elements i will just introduce the Dirac spinners here so there are spinners that is mfi the matrix element is given by some up bar okay this gamma mu up minus one by q square u e bar u <coughs> gamma mu gamma mu u e this is the instead of writing 
it like this the matrix elements when i will introduce the gamma this the rock openers the matrix elements may be given by this right i am going to use this electromagnetic interaction as an analogy to actually write down the matrix elements for the beta decay abhi main us pe nahi aaya hu okay so now i will consider you just consider these two equations from the electromagnetic interaction between a proton and an electron the matrix elements is either given by this process and if i am going to introduce the dirac openers then the matrix elements pb i will just tell you what is this up bar up bar uh, when i because uh, i don't need to discuss this electromagnetic interaction process here but i will use this analogy to prove the beta decay where i will show you what actually this up bar and up similarly ue and ue bar what actually what is their purpose okay so now <clears throat> uh, keeping this in mind electromagnetic interaction i will just consider the beta decay process so let us suppose the jo let us suppose uh, any one of them so since the neutron will go to proton plus electron plus electron anti neutrino okay now this is actually a point process point process kya matlab hai ek neutron aapka yahan se aaya hai then it just decays to uh, this proton and electron and an electron neutrino right so this is what i mean by the proton process i can just represent i can write down this process as i will just introduce a neutrino on both sides so if i am going to add the neutrino or you can take it like this in simple mathematics so or i can just add up uh, the neutrino on the both sides <coughs> neutrino the neutrino will annihilate this anti neutrino so here we will have the anti neutrino so we will have the proton plus electron or you can take it this it will be a neutrino okay now if you look at this process in a step of a point process so this is a point process here point process now this process will become now a cross process cross process what i mean by the cross process the cross process is mean is it will uh, it will be like cross like a kind of a thing so it will be like this so that means <clears throat> i have this neutron coming this way and a neutrino coming this way and the uh, proton will go like this and an electron will go like this now if you compare with the previous case your electromagnetic case mein hai so here we have we have involved only neutron and the proton and neutron and proton they are nu nu nucleons and we also name them as hadrons okay so that's why i will represent this by j mu h j mu h that is hadron current and if you look at this neutrino and electron neutrino they are, are as we call them as a leptons so that is why i will represent them as a j mu l l stands for lepton s stands for a hadron see so then this particular process jo point process hai i represent i write it like this then i this cross process i will call <coughs> this interaction is expressed as a product of the weak currents so this is again a current jo hum wahan pe current current interaction tha yahan pe hai we call these currents as a weak currents so the interaction the interaction can be expressed as a product of weak currents weak currents that is hadronic current that is the reason i use an electromagnetic uh, this uh, uh, interaction as an analogy hadronic current and this leptonic current leptonic current <coughs> l okay now as i write down the matrix elements for that particular equation i can also write down the matrix elements for this particular equation using the this diopenos so from that very analogy you can say that the matrix elements for this process is given by mfi this is from final to the initial state <coughs> the uh, matrix elements matrix elements given by some g U P bar, gamma mu, U P, uh, sorry U N because I have the proton and the neutron is being involved. Okay, then U E bar, gamma mu, U neutron. Okay, now comparing this thing with this particular equation, जहाँ पे मैं U P bar, I was having a minus one by Q square. Now in a sort of minus one by Q square, this is what we call as a proton propagator. यहाँ पे I use this symbol G. This is called as a weak coupling constant. 
this G is weak coupling constant. ठीक है and also known as Fermi constant. Here, this up bar actually it creates a proton. It creates a proton. Un destroys neutron in the process. Ue bar creates electron. Creates electron, and u nu destroys neutrino. Destroys neutrino. It is going to end in a minute or so. Do join quickly, huh? Okay, <clears throat> so in anal analogy with this, uh, the electromagnetic interaction from the QED, I can view this beta decay process wherein the neutron or a proton can go to the neutron. Uh, the, the one nucleon is transformed into another. Thing. I can view this process as a process process, whereas like we, वहाँ पे हम current current interaction उसको बोलते हैं, so we are actually uh, uh, again calling this as a current current interaction. So but we are talking in terms of the weak currents. This is called as hadronic current because it involves your hadrons, and here we have the lepton current. The matrix elements is given by in terms of this coupling constant and all these, this by 